I have a few questions for the Christians regarding the crucifixion of Jesus. In all of the synoptics, Jesus prophesizes that he will not drink any more of the fruit of the vine until he drinks it in the kingdom of God. However, in the Gospel of John, the person on the cross drinks wine, which falls under fruit of the vine, which puts us now in a dilemma. Either Jesus made a false prophecy, which makes him a false prophet, and a false prophet was crucified for the sins of humanity, or the person on the cross wasn't Jesus. So my question is, which one would it be, or is there another option that I'm missing? Hello, human. Hey, I really like your question, so I'm going to try to answer them one at a time. So in the Synoptic Gospels, Jesus said, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. However, John 19.30 says that Jesus had received the sour wine while on the cross right before his death. So isn't this a contradiction? No, and here's why. So Jesus' statement during the Last Supper tells us really important details. Jesus said he would not drink until he drinks it new in the kingdom with his disciples. So first and foremost, it must be understood that Jesus' proclamation meant that he would not drink and be merry or celebrate until he celebrates in the kingdom. And of course, this will take place when the bride of Christ is united with the bridegroom for the wedding feast. Do you understand? And this is what Jesus explained to his disciples in Luke 22, verses 28 to 30, when he was telling them that they can eat and drink at his table in his kingdom. Now, John 19, 28 says, Jesus, knowing that all these things had already been accomplished to fulfill the scripture, said, I am thirsty. Hmm. Therefore, Jesus initiated this interaction in order to invite or cause the action as described in verse 29. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine upon a branch of hyssop and brought it up to his mouth. Why? Well, because it fulfilled prophecy. Psalm 22:15 says, My strength is dried up like a potsherd, my tongue cleaves to my jaw. Look, Psalm 22 refers to the righteous sufferer's thirst. And of course, Jesus also fulfilled prophecy of Psalm 22 in many other ways. Jesus repeated David's experiences at a deeper climactic level in the history of salvation. What were figurative expressions of David's suffering became literal sufferings of Jesus. The mocking of Psalm 22, 7 to 8, was fulfilled when Jesus was mocked. In Psalm 22, 16, the image of pierced hands and feet becomes prophetic of the wounds the suffering servant would endure and was literally fulfilled in Jesus' wounds on the cross. The casting of lots for garment of Psalm 22, 18 was fulfilled. Um, the proclamation of the Father of Psalm 22, 22. That's exactly what Jesus did. It is for this very reason Jesus called attention to Psalm 22 when he cited Psalm 22, 1, subtly letting the hearers who understand know he was fulfilling prophecy. But more than that, it is written in Psalm 69, 21, for my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Now, John also cites this same psalm, Psalm 69, but verse 9 in John 2, 17, when his disciples remembered what was written, that zeal for your house will consume me. Further, John cites Psalm 69, verse 4 in John 15, 25, how they hated Jesus without a cause. Now, the wine that was brought up to Jesus' mouth was the same wine mentioned in parallel passages. And Matthew 27, 34 specifically informs us they gave him wine to drink mixed with gall, and after tasting it, he was unwilling to drink. So did Jesus receive the wine? Yes, he tasted it. Did he drink it? No. And the only reason Jesus tasted it was to fulfill prophecy concerning himself. John 19.30 says, Therefore, when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Now that word finished is the same as paid in full. Jesus came to finish God's work of salvation, to pay the full penalty for our sins. 
In addition, it should be noted that the hyssop mentioned was a plant classified in 1 Kings 4.33 as a simple shrub that could grow from the crack of a wall. It was used for the sprinkling of blood on the doorpost at the original Passover. Do you understand? Therefore, everything about the crucifixion of Christ fulfilled the requirements to atone for our sins. So, in conclusion, the dilemma you presented of either Jesus making a false prophecy claim and thus being a false prophet, or the person on the cross was not Jesus, well, that is a uh, fallacy of a false dilemma. There doesn't exist only two possible outcomes in this scenario. You neglected to distinguish between tasting and drinking, between drinking as an act of celebration in the new kingdom as the wedding feast celebration, and all actions as being fulfillments of prophecies concerning himself. Now, I know that the Quran states in Surah 4, 157, they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, though it was made to appear like that to them. However, not only is the Bible consistent in all that it is written, even if some people lack understanding of what is written, but all historical evidence affirms that Christ Jesus of Nazareth had indeed been crucified and proclaimed to have risen again, even by historians who were not Christians. And the fact that the Quran denies a historically indisputable fact only proves that Muhammad was a false prophet. Now, I have love for you, so I'm going to try to answer more of your questions as well.